1951, Vishwa Bharati, which was set up as an international center, became an institute of national importance and a central university. So there was a transition, 1951, uh, which is uh, post-independence, but it's just a provisional parliament, right? The elections haven't happened, but they passed this motion of the Bishabharati bill in 1951. So they are taking their educational institutions with a degree of seriousness. Right? So it's the making of the new republic and the institutions, which was a moment I was thinking of capturing. As soon as I started working on this, I realized that you can't talk about 51, the transition, unless you talk about the years before. And uh, also, this is a very strange thing. In most existing uh, histories, little sketchy histories that we have about Vishwamarathi, everything ends in 1941, which is the death of Tagore. But the institution doesn't die, the institution carries on. So, 41 was, I realized, another point, turning point. The death of the founder, a very charismatic person, and the person who made the institution what it was. So, in many ways, in terms of its intellect, in terms of its creativity, and most importantly, in terms of its money, its finances. They kept giving to Tagore's university because Robindranath was alive. So, and then I journeyed back to the moment of the origin, that's 1921. Now, this is an interesting moment because uh, actually 1918, its, form, its foundation is in 1918. This happens uh, as Robindranath's response to the First World War. He is very disturbed by the rising tide of nationalism across not just India, but across the world. Because he interestingly connects it to the war. He says this is a war of nations. So if nationalism did not exist, these wars wouldn't have happened. And it's a nexus of capitalism and colonialism. So as an antidote to nationalism, he thinks of a center, a place where people could come together. So intellectuals across the world. Now, it's really a, a, an absurd thinking, if you think in many ways, that you know a small town in Birbhum, in the district of Birbhum in West Bengal, he should think of having a center where people across the world will come. But they come, because he is the Nobel Prize winner. And not only that, he has spoken in such eloquent terms about the need for humanity, that almost all people he gets in touch with, they agree. So that is the center of oriental studies and visual arts and performance and agricultural sciences that he has thought of. He doesn't think of it, think of it as a university in the standard sense. as a community of, of people who are coming together. Of course, it will, take the, it will take the structure of the university later, but initially he's thinking largely in terms of the growth of knowledge systems which are alternative to that of Europe. Or Europeans who have been thinking about the Orient coming to work with us. So it is a decolonizing project also, but it is very interestingly not a nationalist project. It is a project which is international, cosmopolitan.